What is up, most distinguished viewers of this channel? Today we are going to do part three, which is the final part, at least for now, dealing with welding with CO2 gas on a MIG welder. So let's get into it. It goes without saying, if you haven't seen part one or part two, you should probably go and watch those first. The links are down in the description, and I would recommend you watch them. But you can do whatever you want. I don't care. With that said, we're going to be tackling a couple other things dealing with CO2 gas. In part one and part two, we determined CO2 gas does definitely 100% increase root fusion and penetration. It does also require higher voltage to run properly. And one of the criticisms that I received in the video received is that, well, I ran more voltage than I did with the short circuit MIG with C25, and that is where the root fusion came from. And well, that isn't the case, but I can prove that in a video. So one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to do back-to-back -back tests with C25 gas at 430 inches per minute, 25 volts, and then we're going to just switch the gas, same wire, same settings, just a change in gas, and do a weld on 3 8 plate, and then we're going to compare what the penetration differences are. Because the truth is, is that the gas mixture is what is allowing 100% CO2 to achieve the penetration that we saw in the previous videos, not the voltage, okay? And I'll prove that in a cut and etch. Besides that, I want to investigate how well C100 runs on eighth inch, 3 16 plate as well. I might be able to scrounge up some sheet metal to see if it's even possible to do a weld on that. A lot of you guys, thanks for the comments, by the way, mentioned that you do sheet metal work with pretty thin stuff with 100% CO2 and don't have any problems. Because that was one of my fears in the first couple, the first two videos was the 100% CO2 would run so hot that it would tend to melt through. My guess is it'll still melt through easier than C25, but it should be doable with skill, okay? Now, another thing we're also going to look at that I thought was pretty interesting is the lack of spatter. The previous videos, I saw no spatter, but I was running at settings suitable for uh, 25 volts, so for a machine that could run that voltage. What we're going to also test is running reduced settings that are what like a home hobby 140 amp MIG welder could achieve if we're going to see more spatter. And we're also going to test whether or not at 140 amp output current with a MIG welder, if we can achieve higher penetration with uh, C100 gas with that as well. So basically, uh, an overview of that is if you simply by running 100% CO2 could safely weld quarter inch plate with a 140 amp MIG welder. Now, I have a feeling that you will not be able to weld quarter inch really that well with C100 with a 140 amp machine, but we won't know unless we test. Well, I got all the testing done, and the first thing I want to talk about is uh, sheet metal testing, where I ran both C25 and C100. Now, this is supposedly 22 gauge. I haven't put a micrometer on it to see if it is. It definitely is thin, very thin, and you can see how bad it warped doing these little welds on there. So anyways, everything below the green line here is C25 gas. I ran a couple welds here at somewhere around 105 inches a minute and I think like 15 or 16 volts and it's far too hot. Made some adjustments, a little bit too hot, and then I just increased my travel speed and dropped the voltage a little bit more. I settled somewhere probably around 105 and maybe 15, 14 and a half and just went faster and I was successfully able to make a weld more than a few inches long, probably full penetration, yeah, as you can see, pretty much all the way through. So with C25 gas, I would say that it's pretty easy to weld 22 gauge sheet metal. Now keep in mind, guys, I was a lazy bum and I ran 035 wire. 
So had I ran 030 or 023, this would have been infinitely easier to do. So the mere fact that that ESUB welder I ran this on was able to weld this thin of material with 035 is a testament to the machine, not to me, that's for sure. But yeah, so C25 gas with oversized wire, wire it's doable. Now the 100% CO2 was a little bit trickier. So instantly i ran the same settings as i did with this with the 100 percent co2 and it just wanted to melt right through immediately i made a bunch of settings adjustments i traveled way faster and what i found is it tends to just want to neck down super thin when you run fast which is fine but it's so difficult to get a consistent weld that isn't just like neck down or not even there when you run so fast. So I screwed around a bunch with the settings. I ended up at somewhere around 95 inches a minute of wire feed, which keep in mind again, that's 035 wire. So that's absurdly low and somewhere around 14 volts. I was successful and able to make a decent weld uh, with it. I did of course blow out the end of every one of them because of how difficult it is. If you slow down for a millisecond, you got a hole, but it's doable. Now, a couple things I learned from doing this. One, C25 gas is definitely easier to weld sheet metal with. Two, 100% CO2, even at reduced settings, I don't see any spatter on any of this. Okay, so the spatter thing, I don't want to say it's a myth because I've seen it, but if you run okay settings, you really aren't going to have an issue with spatter with 100% CO2. Now, the last thing that I guess I learned doing this is that there's no question 100% CO2 is a hotter mixture. Uh, even if I don't increase the voltage, it just seems to want to produce a very narrow deep penetrating bead like when i compared the two like this is far wider all these are far wider it just wants to make a neck down weld so i think a lot of it is that heat and the drive of that molten metal in the wire is trying to go through it more so than it is trying to wet out oh i also almost forgot uh, you definitely don't want to pull on this i tried pulling on a few of these and good luck instantaneously you have a hole within a quarter inch so pushing makes it uh, wet out a little bit better and doesn't penetrate as much so uh, i would say 22 gauge okay doable if it was a little bit thicker than this and i had 030 wire or 023 all day i would say you could do 100 percent co2 and make it work so that's a great sign now let's look at a actual weld. So here are two test welds that I did. This is eighth inch material. This is three sixteenths material. Both of them I pulled. Now, if you watch the video I did, link in the description, by the way, watch it when you're done with this on pushing versus pulling, you would know that pulling has more penetration than pushing generally. However, it does give a little bit of a round bead profile. These are both acceptable. Uh, it's kind of like a 7018 stick weld with the more round bead. Had I pushed it, it would be a little bit flatter. But I do like the look of both of them. The interesting thing is that reduced settings, reduced voltage, uh, neither one of these have any spatter. I mean, just looking at it, I would classify it as zero. I mean, any stick weld that you would do has more spatter than this. I mean, maybe there's a little bit, I mean, I'm splitting hairs here, it's so fine. I find it interesting, and a viewer had mentioned in a previous video, that when they run 100% CO2, they see more spatter on the MIG nozzle. And you know what, they're right. I saw far more spatter on the nozzle doing 100% CO2 than anything else. And there's actually, I guess I shouldn't say that, there's some like BBs on the table, but luckily none of it winds up on your weld. So that's awesome. What I'm gonna do now is just break these off camera and we're gonna look to see what kind of fusion we got at appropriate settings for this material. Well, I bent both of these in a shop press and neither one of them fully failed in. I'm sure if I bent it back and forth, I could make it fail on its own accord, but I thought I would show you this. So the 3 16th plate bit, I would say about a third of the way in. So pretty good. Now keep in mind, had I turned it up, being that this is so thin a material, I could have burned completely through this without a problem with the 100% CO2. So at reasonable settings with an appropriate size weld for a fillet weld, very strong, no real issue there on the thinner material and really good root fusion. None of the original edge of that is 
still intact. It's all broken down. Now, in a sort of same but different story, this guy here, uh, well, I bent the plate and the weld, it didn't give at all. It's still fully fused. It just basically did a 90 degree angle here. So what eventually would happen is the material would probably tear up here. So one thing is, is that this weld is probably a little bit bigger than what it would need, but more than strong enough for a single-sided fillet weld on thinner material. So that's pretty awesome, the performance there. So yeah, 100% CO2 on common material you might weld. Uh, not too bad, definitely has strength. Now, if you recall in part two, where I actually did bend testing on 3 8 plate, we found that the 100% CO2 failed before C25 on a bend test on thicker plate. And that's because that material could stress the weld out enough to cause it to fail. Now that was done away from the face and this is done towards the face, but still even on that, obviously thicker plate can put enough force to where it just tears through the weld. And it kind of goes to show that you need an appropriate weld size for what you're doing. This is more than adequate. If we needed a lot of strength on thicker plate because the force was being bent towards the face of the weld, we would need a lot bigger of a weld to hold it together. Anyways, I'm getting off track. Very acceptable performance. I like it. No issues there. Let's go and look at a cut and etch of the next thing. So for this test, I took a piece of 3-8 scrap, just ran a bead across it, then did a cut and etch. So why don't we look at that right now? So when we look at this 140 amp MIG weld on 3 8 plate, the penetration's pretty weak. I mean, if you compare this to spray arc or even 100% CO2 at 200 amps, uh, the difference is night and day. This is about half as much. Now, is this better than C25? Absolutely it is, but not enough to where I think it would be smart to be welding on 3 8 plate with a 140 amp MIG welder, if you get what I'm saying. Keep in mind, this is like an ideal way to get fusion, a flat plate just running a bead. And a small difference that you see on a plate like this adds up huge if you're actually welding two things together. Because every little bit extra that it burns in is just going to add to, say, a fillet weld where you're going to get root fusion. This right here would probably barely be able to achieve any kind of root fusion on a fillet weld, which is far less than ideal for this thickness of material. All right, let's move on. So as you saw the fusion, it was there in the sense that it had some, but not really too ideal for welding 3 8 plates. So I can't say that if you have a 140 amp MIG welder that you should be going and welding, you know, 3 8 plate just because you have 100% CO2. So it's better than I thought, but that's not saying much. Now let's go and cut this plate where I ran a bunch of settings and CO2 and C25, and let's see what uh, is inside of this. So on this cut and etch, which is quarter inch plate, I ran one bead with 100% CO2 at 430 inches a minute, 25 volts. And then I ran this weld, which is the same settings, except I just switched gases, because a comment I had will, the voltage increase was just why the 100% CO2 had more penetration. Well, I know that's simply not the case, but that's why I did this. So same settings, just different gas. Now, visually, if you look at this, the C25 is way wider despite having the same settings than the C100. So that's quite interesting. Uh, now, the middle weld, I did add 140 amps or appropriate settings for like maxed out 140 amp uh, MIG welder, 120 volt MIG welder, and running 100% CO2 gas to kind of see if this penetration is any better than the 3 8 plate that we just saw. And I don't anticipate too much of a difference with that, to be honest. Well, anyways, let's look at the cut and etch. So without a doubt, a gas mixture change at the same settings and there's a massive difference between the two. When you increase voltage with short circuit, it tends to make a weld wider. It does not penetrate anymore. I mean, if you look at the 140 amp MIG weld, it's not really that much less penetration than one at 210 amps or so with the same gas mixture. 
increasing voltage and wire feed after a certain point doesn't net you much gain. Switching to a different gas mixture, well that's a whole different story and you can clearly see that CO2 weld is far, far deeper penetration. Again, at the expense of the actual weld strength to a certain extent. All right, well, let's go to conclusion. Well, what did we learn, gentlemen? Well, I learned a lot doing this series, especially in this video as well, and I'll cover a little bit about that. The main thing I want to mention is that it's funny to me how for years and years and years I hear and get told certain things like, oh, 100% CO2 just has massive amounts of spatter, all this stuff, and then when you actually get around to testing it and using it, you find out that that's really not the case, and this is a prime example. Uh, if I learned anything, it's that 100% CO2 with even reasonable settings doesn't really produce more spatter than any of the other gases, so I really like that. That's a huge benefit because there's a lot of strengths to the process of 100% CO2. Now, based on what we saw here, there's no question that the gas itself creates uh, much deeper penetration at the expense of bead width, which is fine for most of anything that you might be welding and that I might be welding. But like I saw in the previous video, uh, there is a legitimate uh, loss of strength when you use 100% CO2 over C25. Now, that's kind of an interesting thing, and let me explain. With the short circuit MIG process, aka 100% CO2, C25, where you're not spraying, you're not running dual shield, etc., the realistic maximum thickness you should be welding is somewhere around 5 16 preferably quarter inch. When you start getting up over that, you run into issues, okay? Well, if you, with 100% CO2, if you welded quarter inch material, I guarantee you the material will bend before the weld fails on quarter inch. When you step up to 3 8 like in the previous video where you try and bend it like what this is, that 3 8 can impart so much stress on that weld that it simply fails. So for most of you at home, if you're welding up to quarter inch thick, I don't really think you're losing anything going to 100% CO2. Now, one thing that's not a myth, the bead is a bit rougher in appearance. It kind of has a weird look to it. It's not really that noticeable, and if it's painted, you'd never notice it, but it is there. 100% uh, CO2 is rougher than C25. Now, when it comes to sheet metal, like you saw I tested earlier, the sheet metal, there's no question it is harder to weld 22 gauge steel with uh, 035 wire with 100% CO2. If you use appropriate wire diameters for what you're welding, unlike what I did, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, and I didn't see much spatter on that either. So if anything, the takeaway that I have from doing all this testing is basically that 100% CO2 is a very viable option for you guys. It will increase penetration. The spatter isn't that much. And the cost of the gas for a 20 pound cylinder like you saw in the previous video, that's like 14 bucks to fill up versus somewhere around 40 or 50 for the same amount of gas in a normal cylinder. Plus the cylinder's cheaper. So it's a really solid option. Now, will it give you the ability to weld quarter inch plus steel with a 140 amp MIG welder? Well, it'll perform better than C25 gas, but honestly, you really need more horsepower for that. And that's something else I'll kind of finish this video up on. If you want to weld 3 8 plate, you really need to be talking about dual shield or spray arc and you're running C10 or say C100 or C25, whatever for your dual shield wire and a 220 plus amp machine. I hate to tell you guys this, but there's no miracle worker when it comes to welding thick plate with wire. You need power. So no doubt 100% CO2 increases penetration, but so does amperage, and amperage is a more reliable, better way to go about it. So again, there's no smoking gun in this. There's no miracle worker. If you want to weld thick plate, you need a big wire welder or go to stick or TIG. So just my thought on it. Anyways, hopefully you learned something. If you have any comments, questions, you know where to leave them. Until next time.